All right, so welcome back to Lesson 4, Level 3, Part 3. I'm going to introduce you to a new function that was introduced in Excel 2019 or, off, or Excel 365, either way. And what it is, it's a way to replace a nested if function. So we've been learning about nested ifs, and they can get really long and cumbersome if you have to nest an if inside an if, inside an if, inside an if. The if s or ifs function, I'm going to call it if s, is a way of shortcutting that and making your formulas a little simpler and more straightforward. So let's say we have a list of cities and states here and we have the sales for our company into each one of those cities and I want to find out if they're the top seller I want to put out the words you are awesome. If you're the second best I want good job, good effort. And everybody else better luck next year. So if you're none of the above better luck next year. So there's a few different ways to do this. Let's do it with a nested if first. So equals if. Now how do we determine is this value the highest of all those? We can say, hey, is this value equal to the max of all these? And I want to provide some referencing in here so that if I copy it down, the B2 turns into 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so I'm going to leave it alone. But I don't want B2 through B9 to change into 3 through 10, 4 through 11, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to hit F4, F4, close that. If that value is true, I want to say, you are awesome. F4, F4. Now if it fails that test, Using nested ifs, I have to come in here and put another if statement. So if if this value is the second biggest, so how do I do that? So if b2 equals the second biggest, how do I do second biggest? Uh, how about the second largest, because there's a large formula. Large formula out of this array. And again, f4, f4. And I want the second largest. So I'll put a 2. And if it's the second largest, I put a comma in there. Now the value, if that's true, is the good job, good effort, F4, F4. If our first if statement's false and our second if statement is false, if it's not this and it's not this, the only thing left it can be, if you're not the first or second, you're something other than the first or second, we're going to get that. So right there, F4, F4. Oop, I forgot my other parentheses. That's because it's a nested if and I need to. See the unnecessary complexity of a nested if function? All right, let's copy it down and see if it works. You're awesome. You happen to be the biggest. You happen to be the second biggest. How do I know for sure? Well, let's see. I can apply some conditional formatting into there and say, hey, color scales. Let's do that one. So you're the greenest. You're the second greenest. Yeah, looks right. All right, so now let's do the same thing using an if s function. Equals ifs or if s. What's our first logical test? It's the same logical test we did before. Is this value equal to the max of all those? So is this equal to the max of this range? No, 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 F4, F4. So that's logical test one, comma. If that logical test is true, then the value if true, one, or the first value if this is true, F4, F4, comma. Now we just go to the next logical test. We don't have to insert another if statement into here. Is this cell uh, the second biggest? equal to, I think we did the large function of this range of cells, F4, F4, comma, 2. So if that logical test 2 is true, what's the value that corresponds to it? Well, I want this good job, good effort, F4, F4, comma. Now, we need a logical test that if it is true, it renders this cell, B15. So what kind of a function would we come up with that says, hey, are, are you the first? Are you the second? 
Are you more than the second? How do we do more than the second? I don't know. Let's see here. How about we use the rank function? So let's find the rank of this bug tussle sales. So the rank dot eq, this number in this range of cells, f4, f4, comma, is it ascending or descending? So the bigger the number, the lower the rank. So that's descending. Close the parentheses. If that rank, so 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, is greater than or equal to 3, then we do this better luck next year. F4, F4. Close the parentheses. And let's test it out, see if we get the same thing. Yep, everything's the same. So that's how one way to do it. But there's actually a little better way, a shortcut that we can take that keeps us from having to come up with a none of the above type formula for a logical test right here. So right here for a logical test, if this is true, we want B13. We want you're awesome. If you're the second best, we want B14. If you're not that or not that, the only other thing you can be is something greater than that number. So it's looking for a logical test that says, hey, if this is true, give us B15. Well, what's something that's always true? Guess what? It's the word true. So if logical argument 1 is true, you get B13. If logical argument 2 is true, you get B14. If the word true is true, then you get B15. Well, true is always going to be true. Hit Enter. Copy it down. We got all the same thing, and it's a lot more simplified argument. Cool stuff? All right, let's move on to something a little more complicated, but something you're going to run into a lot just as well. Let's say we've added a little data to that last table, so we still have customers in all those cool cities, Bug Tussle, Mosquitoville, Nimrod, Rough and Ready. Yes, these are actual city names in those states. Let's say Bug Tussle is supported by the wholesale distribution, and Mosquitoville is supported by the manufacturer, and Nimrod is supported by a franchise, and we still have the same sales numbers. And I want to know who the sales manager is for each one of those. So out here I want a column, and let's go ahead and put some fancy borders around it. Awesome. So if it's the word wholesale in here, I want it to have Sally's name here. If it's OEM, I want Billy. If it's Franchise, I want Chris. So that's what I want out here is one of those three names. So I'm going to use an ifs function equals ifs. So the first logical test is, hey, is B2, is it equal to wholesale over here? And I want to protect that with a dollar sign in front of the row, so as I drag it down, it doesn't change. Go back up here. So if wholesale is wholesale, so I want Sally to bop into that cell, F4, F4. All right, what if that cell equals OEM, F4, F4? The value of that is true, I want Billy, F4, F4. And finally, if that cell equals franchise, F4, F4, comma, Chris, F4, F4, close the parentheses. That looks pretty simple. And let's see if I can copy it down. OEM is Billy, franchise is Chris, Sally, Billy, Chris, rot row. What's this? This one's misspelled wholesaler. That's pretty common for people to type in the wrong values if you let them. So what do we want to do if we come up with one of these that isn't one of these lists? How do we handle that? Well, there's a couple different ways we can do it. We can do what we did in the last one, and we can say comma uh, true comma 
channel not listed. Then copy that down and drag it up as well. What the heck? And that works. That's one way to handle that. Another way gets you the same result. And I'm not really sure which is better, so I'll accept either way. I've seen it done online both ways. You can take that function. If it doesn't find the input in these choices, it throws an error. So you can capitalize on the fact that if something throws an error, you want something else to happen. So let's do that function. If error. So if this entire function here throws an error, if this whole ifs function throws an error, comma, what do I want to say if that function throws an error? Well, I wanted it to say uh, channel not listed. And then copy that down. Copy that up. All right make it a little wider, double click there, we're good to go. Either way works. The book shows you the value of sticking in the true as the fourth character in that, and I'm okay with that. I think that's probably the more consistent way, but you just have to remember to put in a, a none of the above error catch-all thing at the end. Either way, it works. Six of one, half dozen of the other. So I'll leave you with that for now. Take care, have a good day, and go Knowles!